This week's webcast is about something that's little less technical than the previous sessions, and um, it deals with a question that almost all of us should ask about a company that we've been called to analyze. And here's the question. What does a typical project for this company look like? Easy to answer for some companies, difficult to do for others, but let's start off by looking at why we care. Why, why do you care what a typical project looks like? Here's why. I think by knowing what a typical project looks like, you can structure investment analysis. You can know about when the cash flows come in, what type of cash flows you have, how long do the cash flows last. And if you dig a little deeper, if you can structure a typical project, you can also start laying out what the drivers of value for that project are, what makes it successful, what makes it for, for, for failure, what are the risks. So I think the first reason you want to look at a typical project is it allows you to structure investment analysis. And here's the follow-up. If you've structured a typical project, you can also lay the foundation for how to finance that project. Okay? We talked early on in this class about how the right kind of debt for a company is the one that best matches its assets slash projects. So if your projects are long-term, I said the debt should be long-term. If your cash flows are in euros, your debt should be euro debt. So by if you lay out what a typical project looks like, you've in a sense also laid out the right kind of financing for this company. And here's the third factor. When you look at the pattern of cash flows in your project, you can get a sense of when, you can, when you're going to be able to extract cash flows out of this project, which in the context of corporate finance is when you can start to pay dividends. So in a sense, if you think about the three base principles in corporate finance, the investment principle, the financing principle, and the dividend principle, understanding what a typical project is, is, is going to look like will allow you to answer those questions better. So with that background, let's start looking at easy to difficult co uh, co companies in terms of isolating or identifying what a typical project looks like. Let's start with the simplest case. The simplest case is, of course, a company that has a single project, and when the project ends, the company is over. I'll, take a, I'll, I'll create a hypothetical example. Let's assume you have a company that's building a toll road in Mumbai. Okay? That's all they're going to do is they're going to build a toll road, and once the road is built, they're going to run it for as commercially for a period of time, 15, 20 years. And at the end of the period, based on the agreement, they will have to sell the toll road back to the, the Indian government at a specified price. The price is set up front. So this is a fairly easy project to analyze. You're going to have a, it's a long-term project. You're going to have an infrastructure investment cost of three, four, five years, depending on how long it takes to get the toll road built. And remember, this is India. You should always add another three years for regulatory delays, legal issues, whatever. So let's say it's going to take you eight years of cash outflows, and only then will the cash inflows start to come in. The cash flows are all going to be in rupees, both the outflows and the inflows. You're saying, how is this going to help me? First, if you think about financing this project, you have to think about a way of financing where you don't have to make interest payments for the first eight years. Because if you have to make interest payments in the period where we're building the toll road, it's going to be tough to do. So it'll tell you how much debt you can borrow, what type of debt you, could, should, you should use, and maybe structure the debt in such a way that you're able to sustain that debt for the period or for the period of the project. And it also lets you kind of start identifying the risks that might affect whether this toll road will work or not. You know, what kind of prices can you charge? How many cars are going to get on the toll road? So by by listing out those things, you can start to understand what's going to drive the value and success of this particular company. So this is a really simple case, a single project company that dies with the project. Very few companies actually fit this, these parameters. So let's move one step up the list. Slightly more complicated example, a company that takes lots of projects, but the projects are all, all look the same. This is not that unusual. There are lots of big, fairly large companies out there that have homogeneous projects. Let me take again, again an example. Buffalo Wild Wings. I've never been inside this place, but it's a pretty fast-growing restaurant chain. And if you look at an investment, a typical investment Buffalo Wild, Wild Wings, it looks pretty much like the previous one. It's, you know, it's a, the, the, each Buffalo Wild Wings is, is of roughly the same square footage. It's about the same size. It has the same styling. It's built around the same kinds of locations, though some locations can be more lucrative than others. And the lease contracts are pretty standard. They're usually 12, 15 year leases for every restaurant. Saying, how is this going to help me? But that's a typical project for Buffalo Wild Wings. You can think about the kind of financing that best matches those, those characteristics. Now, what are other examples of single product companies? You could be a large pharmaceutical company and every project you take looks just like the last one. It's a big 10-year, 15-year R&D investment where all you have are cash outflows. 
Then you have the approval process, which might take another four, five, six years of testing, going back to the, the for approval, coming back again and trying again. And then after about 15, 16, 17 years, you get a period of protection against competition where you can get higher prices, higher profits. So your typical project might last 30, 35 years. Or if you take a company like Boeing, it's pretty much had only, what, nine projects in its lifetime. 707, 727, 737. Again, it's that big upfront R&D cost. Then the cost of setting up the production facilities. Then you first start producing the plane. And there are lots of glitches. I mean, think about the, the most recent experience with the Dreamliner where things have to come back. They have to get fixed. And once you've got the glitches out, then you can live off that investment for about 30 years or 25 years before you go to the next project. So you can have fairly large companies where every project looks just like the last one. Let's move one step up the difficulty ladder. You can stay in the same business, but your investments are getting more diverse. An example for that is this Walmart. Until about five years ago, every investment for Walmart looked like the previous one, just like Buffalo Wild Wings, with another big store built somewhere in the U.S. About a decade, maybe, but more, mostly in the last five years, Walmart has increasingly moved overseas. First in Mexico, but now they're looking at India, they're looking at China. And there was an article a couple of days ago in the New York Times, I think, or the Wall Street Journal about Walmart's troubles in India, where they were discovering that the template that they'd created in the U.S. for a typical project wasn't quite fitting in India because time kind of expanded. What used to take them two years to do in the U.S., you know, buy the land or lease the land and, and put up a store, was taking them six, seven years in India because of the regulatory legal processes. So if you were setting up a typical project for Walmart now, you might be set up. You might set up four different kinds of projects. One for a typical U.S. expansion, which I, you know, which is getting more and more infrequent. A second for an, an Asia expansion. A third for a Latin American expansion. A fourth for a European expansion. And maybe if they start to go into smaller stores, a different version of their stores. I don't know whether Sam's Club looks just like a Walmart. You might think about setting up a different investment profile for that class of investments. About 20 years of the gap went through something like this because until about until about the early 90s, a typical gap store looked just like the previous one. It was another mall store with about a 12-year lease, but then the gap started opening Banana Republic, Gap Kids, it started opening street stores versus mall stores. Things get a little messier, and I would draw our typical projects then by group if the projects are getting more diverse. Further up the, ma the difficulty ladder, you have multi-business companies and things get really difficult because each business might be so different that you cannot come up with a typical project for the company, but you can come up with a typical project for a business. Since we've talked about Disney in this class, good example of a company in very different businesses. Take the theme park business. Typical investment for Disney in the theme park business might take five, six, seven years to build. And last for 50, 60, 70 years. Look at Disney World, look at Disney, you know, Disneyland. I mean, they've been around decades. In contrast, if you think about the movie business, a typical project of, for Pixar might be, what, two, three years in production, might cost 150 to $200 million. Might have only about a six-month run in the movie theaters. Might get to about a year and a half of, you know, D, uh, of DVD or direct sales. And that business is changing as well. And then you have the toys that come out of, you know, the next Pixar movie that might give you revenues or earnings and cash flows for another five years. So when you list out the project for a movie, it might not just be the two and a half years of the movie itself, but the seven years including the other stuff that comes out of the, the movie. And if you look at it, the TV business, very different business. Again, a typical project there might look very different from a typical project in the movie business and a typical project in the theme park business. But with Disney, that's what I'd need to do is each business I'd have to kind of lay down the template for what a typical project will look like, which also means that the risks I face in each business will be different, the financing I use in every business will be different, and the amount of cash I can afford to pay given each business can also be different. Another messy case is if you're a company that grows through acquisitions rather than, than typical investments, you know, typical internal investments. I think of acquisitions as just another project. So if you're a company that grows through acquisitions, I'm going to then start to list out what a typical acquisition looks like. You think, what, is, what does that mean? An acquisition is an acquisition. Remember, you can be an acquisitive company that grows in one of two ways. You can buy big companies once every two or three years, or you can buy 15 small companies every year. Cisco is an example of a company that grew through much of the 1990s by buying 15 or 20 really small technology companies. 
with nascent technologies and commercially developing these technologies. So if you were looking at Cisco in the 90s, a typical project would have been an acquisition of a small company funded primarily with stock because that's how Cisco paid for these companies. And the benefits primarily came from converting the nascent technology into a commercial product. So when you think about an acquisition-driven company, follow through. Think about how it grows through acquisitions, what a typical acquisition looks like, because that's going to lay the template then for how to measure the success of an acquisition, what the risks are, how you finance the acquisition, and potential cash flows from that acquisition. So here's some final advice. There's no easy way to come up with a typical project for a company. So look wherever you can to get information. So if you are uh, doing Lululemon, check out what a typical, I mean, you've never seen a Lululemon product, check it out, you know, see what it looks like, see where they manufacture it. So it's good to have some experience with the product or service. So if you're doing Buffalo Wild Wings, you know, spend a Saturday night there, see what it looks like, see how big it is, see how many people come. Keep, a check, keep an eye on what, how much people spend around you because that's going to give you some sense on what a typical project does for this company. Check the financial statements. It's, there's no one place you should do, but if you read through the 10K or annual report, there's probably going to be some description of an investment made in the past or investment the company plans to make in the future. Look to see how much they're spending, what they expect to get out of this. And look to see also statements about past mistakes. We made this investment seven years ago, it didn't work out. This is how much we're riding off and this is why it didn't work, off, work out because that's part, of, that's grist for the mill when you think about a typical project. And here's the final thing I do. I get on to get online, I go into Google and I do searches for the company. Maybe there'll be news stories about particular investments that this company is planning to make, has made, or is now writing off. And all of those feed into my assessment of what a typical project for my company is. So give it a shot because it's I think it's worth the trouble of trying to come up with at least this qualitative sense of what a typical project is like. And even though you might not be able to put numbers and tell me whether the project is a good project or a bad project, this is really not about answering that question. This is more to get a sense of the risks that drive, drive this company and what to do next about the next investment that this company might face. That's it. Thank you very much. For